I do plant uh, nutritional foods and I do teach the community how to use the nutritional foods. We, we are looking for a, a way to change the world. Welcome back to Africa Science Focus the weekly science and development show from SIDEMnet. I am Ogechie Kianyo. You are just listening to Ruben Kikura Iswanga, the founder of Kitchen Gardening, a program dedicated to reducing malnutrition among children in his community. Ruben's work is centered in the Kabarole district, a part of Toro region in Uganda. According to the 2022 Uganda Demographics Health Survey, 40% of children in Uganda suffer from illnesses caused by malnutrition. Ruben is contributing his efforts to addressing this malnutrition crisis by promoting kitchen gardening and training communities to embrace this concept. The kitchen gardening approach involves the small-scale cultivation of crops, especially vegetables within people's compounds. Vegetables are rich sources of essential vitamins and minerals such as calcium and iron, all crucial for children's growth. Our reporter, Halima Asumani, spoke to Ruben to find out about the work he and his team are doing. We are just taking a stroll <laughs> on the road. Yeah. Uh, we are on the slopes of Mount Renzori, for those who do not know. Exactly. Uh, beautiful Mount Renzori that, that is between the borders of Uganda and the DRC. And so, uh, Ruben, talk to me about your work. When I joined the agriculture, I decided to work with the community to establish nutritional gardens. Because we know that uh, uh, vegetables do carry a lot of uh, nutri uh, nutrition purpose, uh, uses. That's why we grow uh, vegetables and we facilitate the community to eat vegetables. Mm -hmm. Another thing is about chemicals. For us, we don't use any chemical because we know that when you feed your plants with chemicals, you will also eat chemicals. And remember, when you eat sick plants, you also become sick. Mm -hmm. I teach my community the way they can feed their soil because we eat what we give the soil. Uh, that is, what, that is uh, I say, that we eat what we give to the soil. Our soils must be fed. The soil is very hungry. And uh, as the soil is very hungry, we need to feed the soil so that it can feed us. What are some of the most common foods around this area? Yeah, the common foods around here is matoke, Irish potatoes, sweet potatoes, and cassava. Yeah. And, and then what are we now looking at these kitchen gardens? What is the difference? What, what are you adding on to the staple foods of the area? Yeah, actually, when uh, I, I establish these gardens, my community is no longer feeding on one type of food and uh, is now using different types of food so that they can change the diet. And then what do we have in the garden? I think I can see some skuma wiki. We have the... skuma wiki. We have uh, soya beans, uh, edgy plants. We have beetroot, beans, cassava for, for, for sombe and uh, other purposes. As we use cassava, we have sweet potatoes for food security. And uh, we have leeks. Leeks are somewhere there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, actually, that is what we have here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I can see there is a very great change because people are now being introduced to different types of food that we did not know. For us, we did not know how to eat these beetroots. And uh, sometimes we could feed on fresh beans. After feeding on fresh beans, because the fresh beans carries uh, a little, little percentage of diet. And now we, we are using 
uh, vegetables that can give us more uh, more deity uh, purpose. And so when you decided to work with the community, who was your main focus? Yeah, my main focus is uh, the children. Because malnutrition mostly affects children. You find that even children are not doing well in schools. That's why uh, I myself I decided to work with the communities where they have children who cannot do anything for themselves, they look at the parents, whereby even the parents may fail to give them the best diet as they need. Then they end up dying and knowingly. These innocent uh, people who are dying, who are suffering in hospitals, and sometimes they end up losing their life. That's why I decided to work with the communities uh, of with children and pregnant mothers, yeah. What was the community welcoming to this change that you introduced to them? Yeah, actually, some communities are now adopting this change. And uh, the problem that we have had with uh, some communities, you give them seeds uh, and uh, the, the knowledge, but when you go, everything ends there. How so? Yeah, uh, actually, I've been. Uh, I I have some some gardens that I have in communities whereby they wait for me. If I don't come, they will not work. That is the problem with the community. They take long to adapt. But this is for their own good. Have you educated them, made them aware that you know when you grow this, this is what this these are what the benefits are going to be. Yeah, actually, I'm doing that because I do train them in five days. I have a five-day workshop that I take to my community members. I teach them how to, to dig, how to plant, how to feed the soil, how to use vegetables. And we do even have their functions every month. We teach them how to cook, how to eat these uh, vegetables. Ruben has trained people in various Ugandan communities to cultivate diverse crops with the aim of reducing malnutrition and child mortality rates. Access to nutritious food can be life-changing. Not only can families consume the vegetables they grow, but they can also sell them for additional income. Halima spoke to one of the individuals who has embraced kitchen gardening to discover how this initiative has helped her. I am Kamala Esther, a mother to four. And I'm caring for those babies. And I'm actually I am a farmer who practices kitchen gardening and other crops. But before we started this kitchen gardens, we we were uh, not easy to get to afford the food in 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 time. We used to go there to buy them from markets, and some. Uh, Educated persons, some good persons normally tell us that when you buy some greens from the market, you buy grass because the values, the, the food values already waste, waste through that process from the garden to the market, then from the market to home. That's why we started our own kitchen gardens. And these kitchen gardens have helped us Mostly as young mothers of this village, because we started it when we are few. We we encouraged others and we we created awareness to them, so they they get they get the matter and they started. When they have started, we managed to get to make a group where we can start saving our small incomes from the from the surplus. Because we normally eat the surplus we sell, and here we normally sell from garden. People come and we and we give them. We don't man, we don't normally put them to the market. They came and pick the fresh ones, and these gardens have helped us. Mostly, I myself, I have I have the capacity of eating and selling the surplus for saving. There, I can manage to buy a book from that garden because the surplus 
normally, normally cares for that family. Because this time, I can afford a pen and a book for the child to go at school. My guess is there could be some challenges. What are some of these challenges that you go through in this kitchen gardening that you would like to share with us? Yes, the, the challenges in this gardening, we know the community, you can uh, create awareness, but picking is not uh, easy. It takes time for a person to pick and get interested in this. That one has been a problem to us and a challenge because when uh, someone doesn't pick, his uh, chick, chicks, <laughs> his poultry animals normally come and uh, damage our, our gardens when we have mulched. And that becomes a problem to us. Second, a, prog a problem of uh, these seeds, variety of seeds are not well. You find uh, you've planted uh, a poor variety which can't stand for a long time. And uh, this has been a, there has been a, a challenge of pesty. Pesty, we normally use the local sprays, organic. The, and the pesty which, uh, which, which increase on the plants go, go very slowly to disappear from the plants. And it is just is a, is still a, a challenge. Another challenge is that uh, when the season is uh, changing, Mostly during the dry season, it becomes hard for us to look after these gardens because fetching water, spring with the spring to each and every garden, it takes a, a long time and a, a lot of effort to spray all the gardens. That's why we we were um, manage, we were planning to look for an aggregation kit, which needs a lot of money. We are collecting slowly by slowly. Uh, do you think that, um, you know, kitchen gardening has caused a lot of change, especially among mothers in the community, but also you as a mother? Yeah, kitchen garden has created a change around our mothers in this village because some of them are giving uh, some stories on uh, that they are getting food in in every every time where they in, in where they needed it, they are eating. The mothers are, are sharing experiences with us that since they started this kitchen gardening, they are, their children have plenty to eat. They, some are, go, are, are are getting money from those gardening because for them, we normally sit on plots. You can't manage to go and look for another plot to 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 grow some good crops. But since garden, kitchen gardens were broad, mothers can use the sacks and, and, and grow their crops so that they get food and what to sell. Therefore, their income is also increasing. Mohindo Willington, a social worker, is part of Ruben's team. Having witnessed the impact of malnutrition in his area, Mihindo passionately advocates for farming as a solution. We are a group of youth and who came with a, an idea of starting such a project as an intervention of addressing the malnutrition issues in the community so that each and every household can be able to access at least food, particularly greens, as a way of preventing diseases because this is one way of this is a preventive measure. When you have a strong immunity system and your body can be able to fight diseases. How dire was the malnutrition uh, problem before you started this? You embraced the kitchen gardening. Much as Kabarole district is a food basket, but we still have problems. We are not fully utilizing our food, but instead other people from other places, other districts are benefiting from us. So malnutrition is a very big problem. And actually, we have a nearby clinic here. I do try, I pass there every, every day. And I see people bringing kids to the hospital. When I went there and tried to make research, I found that these people have issues of malnutrition. That's why they, their kids are suffering from even a curable diseases every day. So malnutrition is a serious problem.
This is a mountainous area. I mean, even within the gardens, you can see stones. And, and I'm wondering how fertile is the land? How, how you know, the fertility of the land, is, does it make this kitchen gardening sustainable? Yeah, here we are in done with fertile soils. Actually, some of them just flow from those mountains. So here, we don't use a lot of fertilizers because the soil is rich in terms of fertility. Yeah, so anything that you plant, it will just germinate on its own. And, and how sustainable is this? Is it something that you do over and over again? Yeah, we do it over and over again every season. We do have some demonstration uh, uh, sites where we plant our seed, seedlings and then we do transplant them to each and every other homesteads, as we have seen. Yeah. So it is sustainable. And, and what's the advantage of having, you know, different food types? I mean, or can I call them crop types? Yeah, the, the, one of the advantages is that you, we can have a different foods on our table. If we decide to plant beans, you see we have cassava and we use it for sombe. It is one of the, our traditional food here. If we prepare it for you, you'll never forget it. <laughs> so that's why we normally have a variety of crops uh, so that we can have a balanced uh, meal. Do you have any other challenges when, you know, dealing in this uh, kitchen garden? Yeah, we have so many challenges. Uh, one of them is that uh, we, we don't have constant water, more especially during the dry season. We are, we are standing next to a river, I think. The river is here, <laughs> but we have some other sites which are far, a bit far from the river. So we find that our crops are always dry up in case of when we are in the dry season. Uh, then secondly, we have a problem of, uh, uh, I call them storms, eh? More especially when it over rains and we have seedlings, eh? The, those uh, nursery beds. So they are always destroyed. So we are saying if we had uh, something, maybe like a greenhouse or something that can protect them from those heavy rains so that our crops can't be destroyed, it will be better for us. Then also, we previously we had another problem of neighbors eh, encroaching on these crops. Yes, they are benefiting, but they end up destroying. So we are trying to come up with a method uh, to make sure that every household has its own kitchen garden, well-maintained, other than encroaching on other people's uh, gardens. Kitchen gardening offers some solutions to the complex problem of childhood malnutrition but to be sustainable, people need education about food and nutrition. Bernard Bambele works at the Cabarole Research and Resource Center and is the manager for food systems and nutrition programs in Toro region. He spoke to us about the challenges this program faces and how it can be made sustainable to provide long-lasting change. You know, when you, when you plan an intervention, the, the beneficiary of the intervention must first of all get to know why that is important. And I mean, if if vegetable production is done like any other gardening, then it will not make sense. But it has to be attached to a value of what you want them to, to achieve. Now, of course, with vegetable production, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's very key that uh, every household at least should be able to have vegetables. Of course, you know that most of the children are malnourished just because they are lacking micronutrients. And of course, one of the major and cheap and also effective ways of getting micronutrients would be through fruits and vegetables. That is, that is if the community understands that they should actually eat them. <laughs> yeah, because there's also promoting an intervention, but when the community is not... Uh... Yeah, but so, so vegetables and fruits are really one of the cheapest and yet most effective uh, ways of getting micronutrients, let it be iron, let it be vitamins. You see now, if you look at most of the children we have in the hospitals, they are vitamin A deficient. And yet vitamin A is so much present. Many of them are being given vitamin C because they keep developing cough and flu and whatever, and then the immunity is not strong. And yet vegetables and fruits can do that. And you don't need to go to the hospital to do this. 
we tested this in COVID. Each one of us was taking them as if it is part of the diet every single day. And, and, and I think the science was tested there and, and worked. Now, the, the vegetables, you do not need a lot of space to produce them. And yet you need them. Even in small amounts, they will be able to provide for you the micronutrients that you need. Now, that is why kitchen gardening becomes very vital. That sometimes households don't have the money to buy meat, but you can still get iron that you would want to get in meat and you still get it in, in dodo or amaranthus. So which, which you're producing just in your compound and you can use anything. You can use a bucket, you can use whatever, and food will grow. And given our weather here, it is very, it is very rare that you can throw something in your compound and it doesn't grow. Very rare. Actually, it may not even be there. Anything you throw around will grow. The vegetables will grow very fast. In, in just a month or two, someone is harvesting amaranthus. Someone is already harvesting, uh, you know, skumawiki. Someone is harvesting spinach. And, you know, this is easy to maintain because you can maintain it with the water that you are using in your kitchen. So, in other words, you can have a lot of food which is more nutritious. You don't need chemicals to have a kitchen garden that can feed your family of three, four people. You don't need an acre of land. You just need a piece, a small piece, or even three, four uh, buckets, and you're good to go. So it is, it is very relevant that every home actually should. In the situations they don't have the money, they, should be, they shouldn't sleep hungry. Here, people don't do uh, a lot of animal uh, production, meaning that most of the meat or most of the fish has to be bought. Now, if you have vegetables and you don't have the money, it is rare that you can sleep hungry. Because you have the bananas, you have the matoke all over. You have maybe potatoes, but you know you cannot eat them like that. You will probably need something. But now if you don't have money to buy that something and you have your vegetables, you will survive. And the children will have a, actually uh, an adequate diet if you have this, this simple garden. So in promoting vegetable production, it, it should just be mandatory. Actually, it should even be by law that every household should have. Yeah, because I mean, if you don't have it, why should you go and spend 40000 or whatever to buy vegetables that you can grow in your compound? <laughs> yeah, it's only that we have to be careful on which kind of vegetables we're also promoting. They should be, of course, culturally acceptable. You know, there are some vegetables which can work well in Congo and they cannot work well in Uganda. There are those that are eaten in Kenya, but here they are not eaten. So those dynamics have to be really looked at. But also giving people choice. Like when you're setting up this, families have different dynamics. So a family should be able to see which vegetables they prefer and then they're able to take that. But of course, with guidance from technical persons on the role of each of those vegetables, when people understand the role of each of these and then in terms of growth, how fast they grow, how they can be prepared and all that, it becomes easier. The, 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 the other thing, I think I told Ruben about it, like we don't promote kitchen gardening just for people to produce vegetables. We, we have to go ahead to think about, okay, how are these vegetables produced? Because even when they are dense with nutrients, they are equally susceptible to loss. So meaning that whenever we have an intervention on vegetable production, we're talking about which vegetables are high in what and what do we need and what, whatever, how do we produce them? How do we make them organic? How, how do we keep them safe? But also, how do we ensure that those vegetables do not lose nutrients at the time of consumption. So you will find that when you have it in that way, the consumers or the responsible persons will not have challenges, will actually ap appreciate this. The, the, these vegetables can even be income, by the way, for households, especially if they are produced on a relatively larger scale. Hotels need these vegetables on a daily basis. So it can be a very quick source of income for households that have quite big land and they can be able to to produce for hotels or for their communities and you know so you, you you're handling it at a different perspective you're looking at it in terms of nutrition adequacy at household level you're also looking at it in terms of um, incomes for households yeah and, and of course you know it is now the, the the only thing we have to assure safety of vegetables at our homes you're producing for yourselves so you, you with the ongoing <laughs> trend of um chemicals in food and all this, someone would survive uh, if they have vegetables being produced locally or organically at their home. I mean, that's, that could be uh, something that I could share about that. It's, it's a very relevant intervention, but merged with other interventions, awareness raising, 
on food safety, on food loss management, on behavior change communication, on issues of mindset change. All those interventions must come together. Well, I, I did I did visit some of the sites and to be honest, some of the gardens are poorly kept, the vegetable is withering despite the good weather and fertile soil. Is it because of the lack of awareness that you say of how important kitchen gardening is? Exactly. The, the, the beneficiary probably was given vegetables. And when the beneficiary is given vegetables, well, okay, well, maybe we have to produce vegetables. But the philosophy of why we are producing the vegetables has to come in fast because you have to first change the behavior towards the vegetables. Yeah, so the issue is really about mindset change, behavior change, understanding why vegetables must be eaten is a very big issue that we have to think through. So before even we go into the cultivation, people must have the understanding of vegetables in details. What happens if I don't eat vegetables anyway? Yeah, so if people don't understand that, well, okay, we planted our vegetables, okay, after one month, they start with a ring, but the weather is there. And when you look at the garden, it doesn't even take um, 20 liters of water to, to just water them. You know, the bush is there and people are there in a household has more than six people, but the, the vegetable garden of less than even a quarter of, uh, you know, a 30 by 30 plot, they can't weed it because they are not seeing the relevance of why they have them. So, so I think it's about really mindset change, behavior change issues, lack of awareness to really understand why you must have these vegetables. Surprisingly, someone will have a vegetable garden and he goes to buy vegetables. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they'll think, okay, when I buy this uh, glittering tomato, then okay, I'll, okay. I, I mean, it's, it's just a mindset issue. It's a behavior issue. It's lack of awareness on why people are doing what. You know, that is what we need to do. And in your view, do you think is kitchen gardening the main bullet to fight against malnutrition? Uh, of course, it's like I mentioned, you know, vegetable gardening is one of the interventions, the many interventions that have to be done. But the beauty with it is that, okay, you can, you, you have the numbers because these are families that are producing the vegetable gardening. So it means that if you are doing vegetable production at household level, so you have an opportunity to actually monitor malnutrition at that household. So like the production of vegetables becomes like a unifying kind of uh, activity. Now where you can get your different groups and speak about nutrition, awareness comes in there. That's when you can monitor these households and look at what exactly they eat and you offer them support in terms of dietary diversity, how to improve what. what. So the, the kitchen gardening in itself may not, not not necessarily be a solution entirely, but it is, it gives you an opportunity to, uh, to be assured that someone will be in position to access at least the micronutrients at household level at minimal cost. Yeah, you get it. So, so now if you have changed the mindset and people understand that at every meal, at least I must have a vegetable because of A, B, and C. Now the vegetable production becomes a must solution to most of the micronutrient deficiency things or, or illnesses around. That's all from us at Africa Science Focus today. If you want to find out more, head to the SciDevNet website. That's www.scidev.net. Today's show was produced by Alice Hurst with editing by Ogechi Kianyawa and Titilakwe Fadare and reporting by Halima Asumani. I'm Ogechi Kianyao. Until next time, goodbye. This project was funded by the European Journalism Center through the Solutions Journalism Accelerator. The fund is supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Do you have any comments, questions, or feedback about our podcast episodes? Let us know at podcast at sidev.net. Africa Science Focus is produced by Sidev.net and distributed in association with your local radio station. <music>